very exciting day in learning calculus. So, um, it really is a very exciting day because today we learn what a derivative is. Um, most days in calculus are not as exciting as this. <clears throat> so, a derivative, one thing it's supposed to be, it's supposed to be the slope of a graph. Um, so, what's the slope of a graph? Um, the slope of the, the slope of a tangent line. I said yesterday, if I have a graph, so I'm trying to find this line. Um, I want to describe the tangent line. And yesterday, the last thing we did was decide that there's a lot of ways to give a, a line. I could give an equation, good old mx plus b, which means given the slope and the y-intercept. I could give two points. But since this is a line I know a point of already, it's on the graph. Um, it's the best way to do it is to, the only thing I'm missing is to give the slope. Um, so, the tangent line passes through um, A F of A. So that's a point on the on the graph, and the slope. We we talked a lot about this uh, before talking about limits a couple of weeks ago. Its slope is supposed to be the limit of the tangent of the slopes of the tangents of the secant sorry of the secant lines. Um, through points approaching uh, A. So, uh, well, that's it, but it would be nice to have a formula that would be a lot more, more easy to use uh, to start with. So let's let's draw let's draw the picture and and get a formula. So say we have a graph like this and it has to be more curvy for the picture to look good. And I have my point A here and my X. I don't like my graph. Oh, wow, they don't get drawn in the same order as I'm drawing them. That's messed up. So, um, so the second line is simply the line going through through these two points on the graph. There's no there's no mystery to what a secant line is. You just have two points and and you draw a line to them. So so what the hell is the slope of a line? So I got the secant line parts. Uh, rise over run. Rise over run. Thank you so much. That was exactly what I was looking for. Um, the slope is the rise over run. I mean, 
meaning if I have a good old line here, the rise is the, how much I go to, how much I go up for however, um, for whatever distance I, I go horizontally. <clears throat> so the, if you're, if you're walking on a, on a hill, you'd say the slope is one or a hundred percent. If for, for every foot that you move horizontally, you go one foot up. So, um, so what are, what is a formula now for the rise over the run? Well, over here, this is the run. Is the distance between between x and a? That's just going to be x minus a. <clears throat> the distance between three and seven is four. It's the difference and. The same goes for the for the rise, except now I'm looking at the y coordinate. So the y coordinate, what are the y coordinates of these points? Well, they're on the graph. So the y coordinates are the values of the function. That's what being on the graph um, means. It means that your y coordinate is the function applied to your your x coordinate. So the rise is the difference between f of x and f of a. So the rise is f of x minus f of a. This could be it could be a negative number. It would, it would make sense if I if f of x was lower than f of a, this difference would be negative. It would be telling me that I'm going that I'm going down. That makes perfect sense. Negative numbers are your friends. <clears throat> so, let me say that again, because this is so important. This is the point A, F of A, this is the point X, F of X. So, the X coordinate here is X and A, and over here the X coordinate, the Y coordinates are F of A and F of X. So, the, the rise is going to be the difference and the same goes for the run. So the slope is the rise over run. That means that it's f of x minus f of a divided by x minus a. All right. Are there any questions? This is so important, y'all. Well. Very important that you ask questions right now. If you if you're confused. So um, when trying to find like the slope of this, and you're using like the secant lines to eventually find the tangent line. The whole point is like to find a rise of the thing, like the two different points. It's not really like the focus isn't really on the run, it's more so the rise. Um, I guess, the, the, I mean, the rise is more complicated. The run is just always the same. You know, you, if you have different uh, functions, the, the denominator here is not going to change at all, but the, the numerator is going to be the interesting part that changes. That's true. Um, by the way, if you're trying to do this in practice, like I'm about to, uh, once I finish, you just use the formula. You don't, um, you don't go through the picture or think of what the rise and the run is. I already told you, it's always this formula, you know? So once you believe it's this formula for a function f that I didn't say anything about, you should believe that it's this formula for every function you could always you could think of. Okay. So I really wanna 
two selects at once. So what did I go through? I said the slope is the limit of the slopes of the secant lines. And I just got the slopes of the secant lines. So what I'm missing is the, the limit part. So this, this is the slope. If I change x, I will get a different secant line. I'm thinking that a is fixed. a is where I'm trying to find the, the tangent line. Okay, so um, let me copy what I just said. The slope has this expression. This is the slope of the secant line through. A and X. So now I'm trying to find the limit. So the slope of the tangent line is going to be, in words, it is the the limit of the slopes of secant lines um, as the second point gets closed um, approaches A. So that's in words in a in a formula let me just write what I said down literally. So I said the limit. So the limit of what? The limit of the, of the slopes of secant lines uh, through two points, one of them being A. I just said the slope has this formula. And now what is this? When, where am I taking this limit? What is X doing? Uh, well, uh, X is the, the second point. It has to, it has to be approaching A. So this is the limit as X approaches A. And, and this, that's it. Um, this is the slope of the tangent line. It's so a, basically, yeah. you're just getting the um, like secant line, like the second point so close to the first one that it's basically a tangent line, right? Uh, yeah, that's what, I'm, that's what I'm trying to do. So the idea that we were talking about um, a couple of weeks ago is that as you as X approaches A, the, this line is supposed to get closer and closer to what I actually want. Um, as a secant line. That's exactly it. So, so now we have, but the difference uh, between now and two weeks ago is that now we have language to talk about this. Now we can talk about limits and we know what those are. <clears throat> so, um, let's do an example. So let's um, find the tangent line to the to a parabola uh, passing through the point with x. If it has x coordinate one, um, it's y coordinate is going to be f of 1, so 1 squared. So, so this is the question. I, I mean, and by find the tangent line, I mean find, find the equation. 
and then we'll wrap it and see if it looks banyans or not. So let's do it. So I'm going to use this formula. I'm going to make a equals um, equals the x coordinate of the point that I'm looking for. A is going to equal one. And the and I'm looking at the at the graph of the function x squared. So um, the formula says that the slope. Well, if I just look at the formula, I just said make. Uh, make a, a equals to one. So let me just write down. So if I make a equals to one, that means that everywhere that I see an a, I write down a one. And now, um, what what do I write? I don't know how to do this limit because there's an F and I'm supposed to, I mean, I should do something with that because <clears throat> I have nothing as it is. I can't just, I can't do anything. And notice that if I plug in X equals one, I'm going to get zero in the denominator and zero in the numerator. So that's no good. So what step of X, what do I do with that? Wouldn't f of x be one? F of x? Yeah. No. If it's going through the points, those points, wouldn't it? F of, f of one is one. Oh, yeah. Uh, what, is, what is f of x? What function am I trying to tangent of? x squared. x squared. So f of x. So when you say f of whatever, since f of x is x squared, if you do f of anything, that means plug in it for x. So f of one is one squared, f of a drawing of a duck is a drawing of a duck, presumably the same duck squared. Just whatever you put in the f, um, what f does is square it. So f of x is x squared. f of 1 is 1 squared, which is 1. So now I have this limit. And um, when you find, um, you're, you're going to see a lot of 0 divided by 0 here. So um, we need to simplify it somehow. What do I do with this limit? By the way, I graded your homework, and it was way better than last week. And I could think that it was easier um, than last week, but I'm going to not think of that. I you could factor the top of the equation. You factor the top, right. Um, yeah, you, you generally did very well in the homework. So I'm happy to know. So when you see two polynomials, um, that vanish at the same point. That means that if they vanish at one, that means that they're both going to have x minus one as a factor. Um, so you're going to have you're going to be able to cancel something out. Here, well, this is the difference of squares. I know how to factor that. Because I know if you take something that looks like x squared minus b squared. That's a minus b times a plus b. This is just a very useful identity. So um, 
the x minus ones cancel, and I'm left with x plus one, and that is a limit that I know how to do. Uh, that limit is the limit of a polynomial, which is a continuous function, which means I can just um, I can just substitute. So the answer is that the slope is two. Does this look reasonable? So I'm looking at the point one comma one. And the question is, does it look like at this point for every for every step that we go to the right, we go one up. Um, so if I go one whole square to the right, I go one square up, uh, two squares up. That would be, that would mean I have slope two and then walk and draw a straight line on my screen. Uh, well, I, I try really hard to make it look tangent. I think, I think this looks tangent. I think we did it correctly. Um, so exciting, first derivative of our life. Let's compute the, um, finish uh, finding the, the, the line, the equation of the line. So how do I find the equation of the line? We could use the um, point slope form and just like plug in what we know. Exactly, yeah, uh, that's the easiest way because it means you don't have to think. Um, so the line, you could, I mean, you could go y equals mx plus v. You know this is the slope and then you have well, you, we just said that the slope was was two. So go find B. Um, we know it has slope two and passes through one, one. And that's enough to know a line if I know the slope and, and a point. And knowing that I could plug in x and y equals to one and solve the equation, but I'm not going to because instead, if I use the um, if I use this formula, that is, I find it easy to remember. Um, and it's very useful because we're gonna have a lot of lines where we know the slope at a point. Um, if the slope is m and line passes uh, through the point a b then the formula is um, it's y minus the y coordinate equals to the slope times x minus the x coordinate and this, this formula makes sense to me because the, the slope is multiplying the x as I know it should be. And I know when I plug in x equals a and y equals b, it's automatically satisfied. It becomes zero equals zero. Um, so, um, so I don't need to, I don't need to think. So the tangent line, the, the point is one comma one. So, Um, the second coordinate goes with the uh, y and the x coordinate goes with the x and that's the equation of the line. Let's see, um, y minus one equals two x minus one. That looks 
Hello, Tanyant. We did great. We're doing fantastic. All right. Well, we can feed it one Tanyant to work. Um, since we're here, um, if we, so these are all the second lines um, that we can play with. So it turns out, I know what this will, um, no, sorry, how am I doing? Um, the line that goes through, what am I doing? All right, there you go. There you go. Um, here's the second lines. Um, if you take maybe it's zero and two, as you change the point A, as you change the point A over here, ooh, I can drag it. You can see, uh, oh, you, you can see that the the blue line is indeed approaching the tangent line as we want it. Um, but we don't have to do all this crap. We just we just do a little bit of algebra and that limit wasn't even that, that, that hard. And we can find any tangent line, uh, any tangent line we set our minds to. Well, your dreams are possible if you something. I don't know, I don't know how you That's your dreams. Okay, so um, I'm gonna do another example, but before that, I'm going to tell you uh, a way to to make this easier. So I said, I just said that the slope looks a limit like, looks like this. Um, And and this is perfectly fine, but but there's a way to to make the algebra way easier and the, the limit, which is by somehow making that denominator easier to deal with. And the way to do that is to instead of using x. Um, invent a new letter we like to call it H for some reason I have no idea why um, and we say that H is going to be the denominator so of course if H is X minus A this means that uh, x is a plus h. So then what happens to the limit? Well, the limit as x approaches a so well I I just, I don't know what to put in the limit yet, but I just said um, x is a plus h. So wherever I see an x, I'm just gonna write a plus h. And in the denominator, I'm gonna have, well, a plus h minus, minus a. I already, I already said that the denominator was gonna be h. So, this is the limit. Well, except I don't know. I don't know what happens to h. What is the limit of h? What is this bit um, here? What happens to h as x approaches a? I know how to do this limit. I just said that h is x minus a. 
this function is continuous and the plug in, it's a polynomial, h is approaching zero. h is the difference between x and a it makes sense that as x gets closer to a, the distance between them approaches zero. So this, the, this limit that computes the slope of the line is the same is the same as this other limit with a new letter f of a plus h minus f of a divided by h. And if you're careful with substituting uh, a plus h in there, this tends to be a way easier limit to compute. But both are the exact same thing. They're just um, one is uh, obtained from the other by changing your variables a little bit. <laughs> so what I just said in a picture um, was, I had this picture where this had x, x coordinate a and x, and this was f of a, and this was f of x. So what I just said was call this H uh, and then X is going to be A plus H. And then this becomes, this becomes F of, F of X. Well, X is A plus H. So the rise of the of the of the graph becomes f of a, a plus h minus f of h, and the run becomes just h. Before I was writing it as f of x minus f of a. Before I was writing this as x minus a. So what I just said was that. the formula for a slope that I had before is the formula that I just wrote. So um, this is, um, you know, you can use either formula, but uh, the second one tends to be, tends to be easier. Can you go back for a second? Yeah. I hope that's a new message. Yeah. I'm back. What's up? What are we looking at? By the way, I've said this before. I don't recommend you using the chat. I have, there's no guarantee that I'm I'm going to see your messages. I'm, I'm really trying to keep up, but the way to make sure I know what's going on is to mute yourself. Um, unless I accidentally have the volume off of my computer, but I don't have it off today because I already, I already heard you. All right. So, uh, so let's use this formula for, well, we could use this formula for the other limit, for the other example. It would be easier, um, but I don't want to do the same example twice. Um, so let's do another one. So let's do on the on the hyperbola. Y equals uh, one over x. Let's find the slope. Uh, so this is the slope of the tangent line. Um, we, we, we've never talked in our lives about what the slope of a curve is, but from now on, we're going to say that the slope of a curve, if I was asking about the slope of a hyperbola at a point, I would say it's the slope of the tangent line. If you're cycling down a road and you're saying that the slope here is 
uh, whatever 10%, you're not referring, you're, the, the road is curving. You know what you're talking about? You're talking about the slope of the line that looks exactly like the road close to you. So find the slope at x equals two. So my function here is one over x. That way it looks like this. And I'm trying to find the tangent line at, uh, what did I say, two? So the formula always says, take the limit as h approaches zero of f of, um, let's say, a plus h minus f of a divided by h. So a is going to be uh, two. This is the limit of f of two plus h minus f of two divided by h. And now, this is always the same. We have this, we have <clears throat> our function, we need to, we need to substitute what our function is. Um, so, uh, so now we gotta be careful with how we do it. The function is one over x, and I'm trying to plug in two plus h in there. So if f of x is one over x, and I try to plug in there one plus h, that means that whatever there was an x, you put a one plus h. Uh, that means that you put one plus h into the denominator. Why are you putting one plus h and not two plus h? Oh, because I'm silly. Thank you. Well, so if I wanted to f of, do f of one plus h, this would be the answer, but I wanted to do two plus h. Um, I am doing one over two plus h. Thank you very much. <clears throat> and if I want to do f of two, instead of x, I write a two. And that's the limit I have to compute. If you if you plug in h equals zero, you're going to see zero over zero, so that's not good. Um, so we always need to do something to this. Um, and and here, well, here I have a fraction instead of a fraction, and I freaking hate that. It's so confusing. Uh, I should get rid of that, and hopefully. Uh, like will be better afterwards. So what can I do here? Uh, could you make the denominators the same? Okay. Uh, so yeah. So so uh, when I add the fractions in the denom in the numerator, I should try to give them the same denominator so I can add them together, right? That's how you add fractions. You wanna add a half plus a third, you write both uh, with the same denominator. So uh, I wanna, so the common denominator to these two, well, they have no common factors. So it's gotta be two plus H times two. And now to make this, uh, to make this fraction equal to to this one, I need to multiply the numerator and denominator by two. So now these two are the same. And to make the second one equal, I need to multiply the numerator and denominator by two plus h. So that these two are the same, they haven't changed. And now I can add them. Well, I can do it now. I can't do it here. So, um, uh, 
So it's uh, 2 divided by 2 plus h times 2 divided by h minus 2 plus h divided by 2 plus h times 2. So, um, so now I'm still sort of, I'm pretty much ignoring the denominator for now. Just trying to write the numerator in the best way I can. So they have the same denominator up here, so I can combine them by adding the numerators. If um, well, with fractions, I always think the example is case. Um, <coughs> yeah. If, if I eat a third of the cake and then you eat four thirds of the cake, um, together we feed them five thirds. You add the numerators. Um, so adding the numerators means you well subtracting in this case. And subtracting 2 plus h means subtracting 2 plus h. This is what subtracting 2 plus h is. If I delete the, the brackets, I'm just subtracting 2 and adding h. So I'm very careful with negative signs and brackets. And now we can simplify the numerator. Uh, the limit as h approaches zero. So what's in the numerator? Uh, just negative h. And this is where it gets really terrible with the two fraction lines. This screen really doesn't want to want me to draw any, does it? plus h times 2. Um, and, and now I'm going to, I'm going to finally take these two fractions and combine them together. Take the, the tower of fractions and combine it into one fraction. So the denominator is going to be the denominator of the numerator times the, the numerator of the denominator. And that's, a, that's what, that's how you combine fractions. The, this thing that was on the bottom here comes to the top and I get, and I get this. And now in the numerator, the only thing I have left is negative H and this is zero over zero, but there's a clear way to simplify it by taking out the h's. Negative 1 divided by 2 plus h times 2. Now, this is a rational function where I can plug in and I have no problem. Was well, that like multiplying times the reciprocal? Say it again? When you, um, Simplify it to get negative h, h times two plus h times two. Oh, is that like yeah, multiplying times reciprocal or cross yeah. multiplying? That's one way to see it. Yeah. Um, so this is uh, c over d in the denominator is the same thing as d over c in the numerator. Exactly. And so yeah, exactly. This is going to sound like a really dumb question, but when we were like multiplying earlier, like the denominators to make them the same, why didn't we also multiply the numerators? Like multiply. Yeah, I, I think we did. Um, you did? We, we did, yeah. So I started, for example. Oh, okay. I missed that. I was not confused. And I multiplied times two on both sides. Okay, I didn't notice. I got confused. Thank you. Okay, right. um, so uh, I'm almost done. I have this rational function where I can plug in, and I can plug in zero, which makes me very happy because that tends to be easier than plugging in two. And I get negative one fourth. So, so that's the answer. I'm pretty sure we did it correctly. So the 
the point is uh, 2 and then f of 2. Remember that the function was 1 over x. So 2 comma 1 half and the slope is negative 1 fourth. So the equation of the line using the using the point slope formula which is super convenient uh, the equation of the line is y minus one half equals to negative one fourth times x minus one, uh, two Uh, let's try it to feel good about ourselves. So, the what I said is that the the, um, the slope through here was supposed to be negative one fourth through here. My face is covering the formula. So, um, and the equation I just wrote is one minus one half uh, equals, uh, and then the slope was negative one fourth, and then the x coordinate was two. Oh, that looks so tangent. I'm so happy. We did it. Um, so, tangent. Well, you know what it means, what it is, is the limit of the sequence. But some other ways to think about it is, well, as the line, as the way we've thought about it before, the line that just touches the, touches the graph, normally without crossing it, although we saw that sometimes it crosses it. But also another way to see it is as the, as the line that is the, uh, the closest to a curve, in the sense that around the points, if I if I just zoom in a lot, uh, or not a lot, if I just zoom in a little bit, the the line looks perfectly, the curve looks perfectly straight, and it looks exactly, so it looks like a line. And which line does it look like? It looks like the tangent line. Here, at least for me, I can't I can't tell the the blue from the red. Um, and if I keep zooming in, well, eventually they're going to be sitting on the same pixels. The computer is not going to be able to tell. So, so that's how you compute a slope, and since um, and that means that, that that is how you compute a derivative. Uh, we'll learn better ways, but now you know you're so much wiser than yesterday. Right. Are there any more questions? So, like the derivative is just like tangent line. The derivative is the slope of the tangent line. I'm okay. gonna do so tomorrow. I'm gonna talk about velocities and then discover that we get the same formula, and then that formula, that formula, uh, this formula. Uh, we're going to call the derivative. Yeah, I had negative 1 in the denominator because the h is cancelled, right? Yes, I did. Uh, here, I had uh, some h's, and if you get rid of, if you divide by h, you get a 1. So, uh, this cancel with that, yeah. So we're learning this because the letters I learned doing this in the past is C, Delta X. Um, what can I do? Uh, 